Good evening, everybody. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guest tonight is Matt Skinner. How's it going, Matt? Great. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me. So on Valentine's Day, you're going to go see the original My Bloody Valentine at the theater, huh? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And then we're going to watch the fan film on YouTube, Valentine Bluffs. It's an unofficial sequel, and it's really good. Yeah, that is a very good fan film. I saw that at Whorehound. Um, if you guys get a chance to see it, if you're listening to this, you definitely got to check out Valentine Bluffs. Now, let's get to some business. Um, you're going to be the main killer villain in the indie horror film Air Fryer Slaughter. How'd you become part of that project? Uh, I, well, I got an air fryer in December and I was, I got right into it like people do, you know, it's like a cult. And, and I'd always resisted getting one, but as soon as I got one, I loved it. I was right into it. And uh, I was always posting about it and, and in a joking way, because I realized what I was doing. So a couple weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago now, I posted if any director, I have a lot of friends that are indie horror directors, if any director would make a movie about a killer air fryer and would cast me as the lead, I would help them promote it and crowdfund because I have a lot of experience doing that. And I said I would get the director's name tattooed on my butt. So four hours later, there was a poster, Air Fryer Slaughter, starring Matt Skinner, that Matthew uh, Mark Hunter made up. And we started the indie campaign the next day, the Indiegogo campaign. And I, we hit our target after like four or five days, our initial target. And uh, yeah, now the movie's cast. They've got this, the set location. Uh, he went to scouting locations like days after. This is moving super fast. He starts filming February 16th, so the campaign won't even be over yet, and he's got the first three of four weekends sh scheduled of filming. So he, he be, he, he's shooting it on video, it's shot on video, and not like HD with a, with a fake filter, he's actually shooting it with a camcorder on video. And uh, uh, he, he thinks it's going to be in the can by mid-March, and he's hoping to have post-production done by uh, sometime in April. So it's moving really fast. Usually this takes like a year or two for all that. You, know? you do the campaign, you wait a month, then you start filming, then you've got months and months of post-production. But uh, Matthew, uh, he works all the time. He's always making shorts. He's got 10 videos on Troma now and maybe 200 shorts on YouTube. So he's just ready to go. He's got his local Ohio actors. He's got the blood, he's got the body parts, and he uh, he just hit the ground running. So, did did the uh, tattoo on the ass happen? <laughs> okay, so, Matthew Mark Hunter goes by MMH, and his company is MMH Productions. So, when I heard it was MMH, see, I'm covered in tattoos, head to toe. And, and I don't have a lot of real estate left, except my butt. And I'm picturing a name, it's got to be pretty long. But it's only three, three letters, so I was like, great, I can get that where someone can actually see it. That was the other thing. You don't want that in your arm, explaining some guy's name for the rest of your life, you know? Oh, this is why I have this guy's name on here. So, MMH, I could fit anywhere. So, I got so excited by the project, and so much is happening. I did the outline of the air fryer, and then gave it teeth, like our air fryer. Put that over the MMH. I wanted it about two inches high. I ended up getting it about seven inches big on my leg. Uh... It looks great. It, I just took the, the wrap off today. They put that plastic sticker on it. That hurt more than the tattoo did. But uh, yeah, it's, it's on there. It's done. That's pretty wild, man. That takes a lot of dedication to really support that film out there, especially you being, you know, the main actor in the film, man. That that takes balls. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a producer on it, too. Oh, wow, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. It's actually an MMH production of Matt Skinner film is what he's got on the poster. But yeah, it's, it's uh, I, I, he's the perfect director. Of all the people that could have responded, he's he's the perfect choice because his, his movies are trauma-esque. He's got those. I would If anyone could go to our, our campaign on Indiegogo, it's under Air Fryer Slaughter, right at the top, 
of the summary, there's a video link to his demo reel on YouTube from 2023. And it's like two and a half minutes of nonstop trauma style gore with buckets of blood being thrown around and cheesy effects and all practical effects. The movie's going to be all practical effects, all shot on video. It's going to be really like trauma, 80s, 90s style. And he's got a wicked sense of humor. So this is going to be really funny, but really, really bloody too. Um, Originally, we wanted it to be only 60 minutes. I had said in my original post, 60 to 75 minutes, because I think over 75 is too long, and I want it to be at least 60. So originally, we were trying to get 60. It might be a little over now, because we've added so many characters and kills. But we got, we got over 10 kills in the first 60 minutes. Like, it's not going to be 40 minutes of talking and dialogue. It's going to be like joke, gag, kill. I know there's a kill in the opening scene. There's a kill in the ending scene. And there's a lot of kills in between. Um, it's going to be nonstop fun. Just funny and play. There's some, there's some really grotesque kills. I think people are going to be talking about this afterwards. And, and we got a great cast lined up. We got Heather Harlow, who's been in a ton of stuff. We got Jessa Flux, who was in my favorite indie horror movie of 2023, Murder Size. And she's won so many awards for that one. And today we announced Mel Heflin, who's like the queen of indie horror. She's got 66 movies out already, and I think something like 20 more coming out. We've watched, we did a Mel Heflin marathon this week, and we've watched 26 or 27 of her movies so far. Um, so it's really impressive cast. This started as, you know, on a lark. Now we've got this phenomenal cast. We got Claire Bacon from the UK doing a remote role as her character, Slotty the Clown. Uh, that's from, she's on Troma as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. It's turned into this, it's gone from like kind of a joke to like this great movie with a great cast and a great script. So I'm really excited. Hey, you forgot Lloyd Kaufman. <laughs> Lloyd Kaufman. Lloyd Kaufman and, and, there's a second uh, project, a short. Uh, he just, we just included it in the same campaign so that if you get like an AP credit or whatever, you get both movies. And Lloyd, it's, it's called, it's like, it's going to be around 20 minutes long, I think. It's called Cool Toy Shark Frenzy. And Uncle Lloyd is voicing the toy shark. Woo! I am, yeah. I am so sold on that. Anything Lloyd Kaufman does. I will definitely go see man. I love that man. He's like the he, uncle I ever I never had. <laughs> he's so funny. And my son loves them. And we were watching something the other day and Lloyd said, Jumping Jesus on a pogo stick like he does. And Char- my son Charlie was like a teenager and he's like, Oh, I hope he says that in our movie. And I, I mentioned that to Matthew, the director, and he's like, I'm putting it in the script right now just to make sure. <laughs> just to make sure he says it. So that's pretty cool um now you were talking about murder size i saw that movie that was that was a pretty interesting film and you gotta love drew maverick man marvick marvick yeah Yeah, marvick yeah yeah he's hilarious and him and jessa in that one scene are so funny (laughs) but also when he comes in and he does the dance and he changes outfits that's so good oh i know he loves to rock director too yeah, he loves to rock those short jean shorts. <laughs> and, and, and he can pull it off. <laughs> yes, Drew can. Drew can pull off almost anything. And I I love his funny uh, photo ops, too, of all those the craziest stuff he ever does. Those are so just <laughs> fresh and original. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Drew's awesome. Drew's awesome and Jess is awesome and Kansas was in that scene too. She's amazing. Kansas bowling. Oh, heck yeah. I like, what I liked in Murder Size was the dialogue, you know. Usually I find the dialogue the weakest part of indie horror and, you know, the practical effects make up for it. But uh, Paul and Angie, which, whoever wrote that, it, they're clever. They're so funny. Every word out of Kansas bowling's mouth was a punchline. I mean, it was just all so funny. I, I love that movie. I really did it. A great job. I think Angie really nailed the costumes and really got that eighties aesthetic down and Yep. And uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be Air Fryer Slaughter this year. We're gonna be the 
the that's not true. We're not gonna have clever. We're not gonna have great dialogue. We're gonna have jokes and kills. <laughs> we're not. That's we're so, not gonna be known for our dialogue after this movie. <laughs> that's funny. So, uh, did he build uh, the air fryer for the film, and what does it look like? I don't. You know. <laughs> okay, so yes, he he did it himself. He does have a, an SFX guy that does, helps him with a lot of his practical effects. But he did it himself. Uh, it looks fantastic. What he did was he took the drawer out of the bottom and built teeth where the drawer was. And then he gave it two red lights for eyes. So it's got the eyes that light up evil red. And then it's got these bloody teeth. And he's, he's, doing, he's doing four air fryers because in like various stages of transformation and evilness, I guess. So there's going to be four of my air fryer character. And then we got one air fryer, uh, that it's, it's different. It looks different. It's, it's one of Drew Barrymore's ones. She put out a line of air fryers called beautiful air fryer. So we got that as like a, a secondary character. A second air for our character. <laughs> That's funny. Now, um, let's talk about Waspzilla. How come I never heard of this film? I don't. Well, it, it's not streaming yet. It just came out on DVD. That might be why. Uh, so James Thomason made it. He's got five or six movies on Tubi, I think, uh, including Terrifying T Rex, which prior to Waspzilla would have been my favorite James Thomason movie. His movies are like uh, early asylum movies with the cheap CGI, except picture that on like a micro budget, like five grand or less. So it's like really cheesy CGI, but it's super fun. So Terrifying T-Rex is great. Uh, every time the dinosaur walks, it's like... <laughs> every step, it's really funny. Uh, but Waspzilla is fantastic. The Wasp actually looks really good. There's a tank battle with the Wasp. There's uh, helicopters and jets. I voiced one of the jet pilots in that movie. And also, in the end credits, my son and I film remote roles from Canada. You can tell because there's snow on the ground. And uh, the wasp comes and kills us. So I get killed twice in that movie. Once in my plane and once outside my cineplex. When I'm uh, standing there and it just comes along and, and wipes me out. Uh, what I gotta say about that movie is Morgan, formerly your last name was uh, T- Thomas, now it's uh, Milam or Milam. I think it's Morgan Milam. I have to ask her how to pronounce that. She plays her own twin in it. Like, her and Brad pulled that special effect off perfectly. She's believable as her own twin. He did a great job filming it. And uh, Angel Bradford's in it. She's huge too. Uh, Mel Heflin's got a remote role. Clint Beaver's in it. It's got a great cast. It's got super fun CGI. I watched it again today as part of our Mel Heflin uh, marathon. I never get tired of it. I think it's, I think it's uh, James's best work, personally. I definitely got to check out Waspzilla. That's going to be pretty cool. And then another film you're part of when it when I first saw this um, everywhere on social media. I mean, because it was going around like the craze, like Cocaine Bear, but I want to see Cracoon so bad. It just looks so oh, good. Yeah, it does. Have you seen the raccoon? No, I haven't seen the raccoon. Oh, it, looks, it looks really good. Um, so that's Brad Twiggs making that. And yeah, he announced it back in the cocaine bear craze. And uh, it's coming out. He's, he's aiming for May. If you, it's supposed to come out around May if everything goes according to the plan. Brad takes his time, you know, he gets it right. Uh, he's got some really fun movies under his belt, and uh, I think I think is going to do really well. There, there was a huge buzz about that back when he announced it, and uh, I think when it's released, we're going to get that buzz again. I really do, because uh, he's got a great cast lineup for that, too, and and he's a great filmmaker, so I think, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I can't wait to see it. So what does this raccoon look like in Cracoon? <laughs> I mean, it's hard to describe. I, I think, I'm not positive. I think they took 
an off the shelf raccoon and demonized it like we did with the air fryer. I, I'm, not, I'm not, someone told me that recently, but it wasn't Brad, so I don't know for sure. But I mean, I've seen the final pictures and it's, it's evil. It's like, it's like the raccoon version of our air fryer, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's on my list. Like I said, I've been dying to see it. I like films like that, you know, Crack Coon. And I totally agree with you. It's gonna probably, it's gonna probably be a hit too. You know, once it finally comes out, um, I'm looking forward to see where it goes with that. But uh, that um, your your movie, uh, Air Fryer Slaughter, that's gonna be off the hook. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. Um, that just gets crazier and crazier. Like when Matthew started to write the script, he said, "How crazy do you want this to be? Like, how far are we going to take it?" And I said, "Man, we're making a movie about a killer air fryer. We might as well go all in, go all the way." And and I always joke when I was like eleven when uh, Maximum Overdrive came out. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, even if these things came to life, they don't have any means of self propulsion. But now I'm almost 50, and I'm like, the air fryer can do anything. It can run. It can use the force. It can pick up weapons, even though it doesn't have hands. No explanation necessary. It's just it's just evil, and it can do anything. So I've totally gone and went, done a 180 on that uh, topic. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be uh, – there's, there's yeah, like I said, there's some gory kills. Uh, there's there's, there's going to be a lot of kills. And a lot of blood, and uh, I think everyone's going to enjoy it. If you like Troma, you'll definitely enjoy it. And I hope it ends up on Troma now, because Matthew does have 10 videos there, so there's a good chance. Since you're big in the horror, especially, you know, the the out-in-the-ordinary crazy horror type of films, what led you uh, into uh, liking those type of uh, crazy out-there horror films? Well, I always like what people would call bad movies, especially horror films, like so bad they're good kind of thing. And we went to a horror convention for the first time in 2021. Um, and we just met a lot of people there. We met Felissa Rose, we met Dave Sheridan. People were talking about their indie movies and the indie horror scene. And so I looked it up, and we donated to a campaign that Fliss Rose was in, uh, Get Out, it's called. It's out on DVD now. Yeah, I don't think it's streaming yet, but it's out on DVD now, Get Out by Dave Kerr. He's got a bunch of good movies. And uh, that, that's what got us into it. And then I started friending people from the cast of Get Out and the Slasher 18 crew that made that movie. They're great people, all of them. And... Uh, that got me into the community and I started meeting more and more people and uh, three years later we're making a movie that's pretty cool so when you went to your first horror convention what was going through your mind when you uh, you got your uh, horror convention cherry popped and <laughs> and how much fun did you have we loved it so much we did a list of photo ops as long as my arm like as many as we could get in we did so many photo ops and met so many people and uh it was actually double the fun because the year before everything had been scrapped because of covid in 2020 so they did the horror convention and then in the giant massive space next door in this convention center they had a a comic-con a regular comic-con so we got tickets to both and the people were all mixing the horror people with the cosplay people from Comic Con, and we all had a great time together. We were there for the whole weekend. It was in Niagara Falls. Um, Charlie did a photo op where that's my son, where it looks like he's in a torture chamber and they're like tearing him apart. And uh, he had a blast. He loves horror. He always has. So it was great. We, you know, he he had saved up his money and he bought a bunch of merch and horror toys and collectibles and stuff and. We did all our photo ops, and we ended up not doing anything else in Niagara Falls. I mean, we've been there a bunch of times, but we didn't do anything on our list because we were just absorbed by the horror convention the whole weekend. So we just spent all our time there. So since you've done that, um, have you uh, went to your uh, ever first uh, indie horror film festival yet? 
No, because I don't know of any really in my area. Even even going to that convention was a huge trip. So I don't like we go to our local indie theater and they have the occasional indie movie. Like we saw, oh, we saw a Big Shark recently, which not many people have yet. But it's you know uh, the the guy who made the room, Tommy Wizzo. He got a new movie twenty years later called Big Shark. And it uh, it was awesome. I loved it. I definitely got to see Big Shark. I heard of it. I'm definitely going to go see it. So, was uh, Big Shark, was it like pretty bloody? <laughs> not, not really bloody. No, it's, it's more ridiculous than anything. Um, it's funny. We saw it on a Friday night. It was the Canadian premiere. It had never played in Canada before. It came to our theater because our theater has played the room 168 times now. Mm-hmm. We play it once a month. For years so greg sestero is in the room of course but he's not in big shark he's in the original trailer and not the original poster but he's not in the movie he brought the movie up he's friends with the theater owner and the theater owner makes music and uh he was fan he was so loud on friday night when we saw it we didn't even realize the movie's not scored yet and there's no end credits and so we went back on sunday that's how much we liked it we went back two days later because it played for three days. We're like, we got to see it again. We don't know when it'll be back. And uh, it wasn't quite as loud this time. So we're like, holy cow, this isn't even scored yet. And it, apparently they're going to release it in March in L.A. And they're going to have like a scored, complete version. And that's supposed to be here in April. But then then we got home and, and uh, the theater announced that they're going to try doing the Big Shark once a month like they do the room once a month. So we were like, fantastic we got on timu and we ordered complete cosplay outfits and amazon dressed like one of the characters tommy plays every time you see tommy in this movie he's wearing different clothes driving a different vehicle um so we took one outfit that he's wearing for like two minutes or whatever <laughs> and, and and we're gonna go decked out every time we go see it in these tommy wizzo outfits that's he's pretty wearing gloves all the time. he's wearing gloves all the time now like we thought it was a gag for the movie, and Greg's like, I haven't seen Tommy without gloves in three years. They're like work gloves. He wears them with a suit, with a tux, whatever he's wearing. He's got these gloves on. Shoot, I bet he has his gloves on when he has sex. <laughs> I, bet he does. I bet he does when he's having sex with a girl's navel. <laughs> in the room. <laughs> he's probably he's probably on there with the, with his gloves, and you know how the you know, and you get you probably got like a crazy girl, and she's like. Choke me with your gloves on. <laughs> with your work gloves. Oh my. Yeah. So, so that's part of our costume. These gloves. Oh, uh, he's a character. That is that is so funny. Um. So, how popular is uh, horror in Canada? I. Mm, I think it's quite popular. The. the like that convention in Niagara Falls is huge. They have them in other provinces. Uh, and, uh, horror movies always seem to do well at our theater. Um, yeah, it's hard to gauge, but I mean, we did a podcast. I did a podcast uh, a couple weeks ago that from a guy I used to be in Sudbury. Now he's in New Brunswick. He's Canadian, and he's been going for I don't know more than a decade. It's called horror etc okay and and uh it's well established and it's canadian it, it, i think it's mostly a canadian audience and then it does really well so I, I think it's it's a healthy horror scene here for sure i think so I, um i think so too because i've talked to a lot of uh, indie canadian horror filmmakers and um there's a lot of uh canadian indian horror India, not India. I mean, indie horror films being shot in Canada. There, I heard are pretty good as well. Yeah, yeah, we got, we got one. There's one. This is old now, going back like 20 years. But in Ottawa, where I lived, it was made, and it's called Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. What? And Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. It's on Tubi. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so the guy who owns our indie theater, he made that movie. So on the rare times when he's at the theater when we're there, he's wearing the Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter shirt all the time. 
And that's like really big around here because it was made here. But I know a lot of Americans that are familiar with it too. And so actually when we went to the Mayfair recently, that's the name of our theater, um, his new movie was playing called Enter the Drag Dragon. (laughs) I got to see this. This seems interesting. It seems like it's one of those uh, stupid but fun type of films. (laughs) That's exactly what it is. And and he calls it the first ever uh, kung fu drag exploitation movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it was it was hilarious. It was just as funny as we hoped. And Lloyd Kaufman's in it, of course. Uncle Lloyd's in it. Um, and he had these nunchucks with, like, dildos on where the bars should be like where the hands should be and it's in the movie but lee the guy who made the movie brought it out for his introduction when he was introducing at the theater and he's doing the moves with it and one of the dildos flies off into the fourth row it was so funny he had to go get his dildo oh my gosh that (laughs) is so flashlight he's looking for it (laughs) that's so hilarious so where can so where can everybody uh find you on social media to see what you're going to be doing next, and also, of course, uh, Air Fryer Slaughter. So, um, on my Twitter horror account is Cranky with a K, because the C was gone when I made my initial account. Cranky Horror, all one word, Cranky with a K. Cranky Horror. And on on Facebook, I'm just uh, Matt Skinner. You'll know it's the right Matt Skinner when you see either my profile picture or my cover photo is going to be horror movie related. Like always. Right now it's uh, Mel Heflin's promo card from being cast in in uh, in our movie. And my profile picture is the air fryer tattoo. So yeah, find me there. Or find me on Twitter uh, or find me on Facebook. If, you, if it's easier to find me on Twitter first, find me there and I'll hook you up with a link to my profile on Facebook because we're doing a lot of fun stuff. I promote a lot of indie horror movies, even ones that I'm not in. Um, my son has over a hundred special thanks credits on IMDb, maybe 40 producer credits and 20 actor credits, maybe from movies that we've been involved with in one way or the other. Uh, Cause we support a lot of movies. That's pretty good. Um, that's what I like about you. That's the same thing with me. I love supporting indie horror and, you know, the artists, the filmmakers, you know, the fans, you know, that just like good uh, indie horror. I just like to get the story out there and get more people to watch indie horror. Yeah, I, and I appreciate that because I, I love indie horror. I love the community. I think if anyone likes indie horror and they're not part of the Facebook community, they got to get on, find us. And and just go from there. That, that's how I got into it. Yeah. Um, my, my first person I contacted was Dave Kerr. Thank God it was him because he's awesome and just makes you want to get right in there and be part of it. And from there, I mean, you know, it just snowballs. You meet more and more people. You get involved in more and more movies. And it's to the point where, like, three years later now, all these movies are coming out that Charlie's picture, that's my son again, Charlie's picture is in them, so he's got a cast credit, or I've done some voice work in it, or uh, or we help produce it. I love that, uh, actually, in Air Fryer Assault, he, he agreed today, finally, my son is going to do his first voice role. He's oh, nice. Never done one and uh, we have one left, and I was like, man, we got one voice part left, why don't you do it? You know, this movie's going to be awesome, people are going to be talking about it. And finally, he consented. He said, all right, I'll do it. I'll try it. Hey, that's cool. And that's cool how you and your son can bond since you guys both, you know, love horror films. You guys bonded to your first horror convention and then that comic convention. See, that's that's the whole thing I like about the horror community. There's no judgment. Everybody gets along and we're one big happy family. Absolutely. And there's a lot of us, you know, <laughs> when, you, when you get on the Facebook groups, you realize like, hey, there's a lot of people involved in this. <laughs> yep, exactly. But thank you so much for coming on and uh, sharing your story. Thanks for having me again, Robin. I appreciate it.
uh, anytime. And everybody, thank you for listening to Horror Pop After Midnight. Have a